just have a couple of questions right. for right. the developer. Go ahead, Gene. I appreciate it. Um, I'm sorry, uh, developer question. You've you've indicated during your presentation that um, you believe that this project makes sense for Walmart. Bigger issue here is does it make sense for the city and the community? So when I said when and answer your question, absolutely. And and, and if oh, I give me, give me a second. Yeah. So uh, if you would. Uh, please, I'm looking at staff report here where it says um, the developer has um, uh, proposed this. Uh, um, uh, let me see here. It says proposed mitigation measures to further minimize any adverse impact to the surrounding neighborhood. Now, would you kind of elaborate a little bit? How would you do that? Because there's no clear picture. There's no um, effective reading here that I'm looking at. Can you talk elaborate a little bit on that? There's um, many issues, for example, there's traffic issues, and another issue here where it says uh, the property is located within a brownfield area and the environmental assessment may be required, may require prior to approval. So there is a lot of issue here. So can you elaborate a little bit on how would you help um, minimize some of these issues? I, Mr. Castor, yes, I, I, I will, but let me say that this is the beginning of the process Clearly, clearly not the finished product. The, uh, if, if, if in fact this is determined to be a brownfield site and not just within a brownfield area, then there are requirements that would need, and we don't believe that to be the case incidentally, but that we would need to, we would need to comply with environmental conditions to bring the property to where it needs to be and there are economic incentives to the developer um, and, and ultimately to the uh, 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 to the, um, uh, the the community itself to have these things cleaned up and to ha have that taken care of. In terms of traffic, we we still have to employ a traffic study. We 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 found the, the contractor that we believe would be most suited, best suited for that. Uh, they've been employed by the city before a year or two ago, and we need to do traffic studies. We need to see what has to happen. Do we have to put in a uh, uh, what is the best recommended course of action to not only ensure that the additional trips that are being made to people that are doing their grocery shopping are, are handled, but hopefully to help to solve some of the existing issues and existing problems that, that, that you're facing right now. We don't see this as a, you know, we, we see this as helping being great for everyone. And I, I, I've got a list of all the different things about Walmart. I, I won't, I, I don't need to do that and I won't spend your time on that. But we think that this is, this is an amazing opportunity for the community itself. And I know we have 550 signatures, but last count I saw, we've got 60,000 residents. So while I understand that, you know, that, that there may be some isolated interests, some that may be directly related to their, their interests and some outside of that, this is, this is great for everybody. I mean I'm really not downgrading is. Walmart, obviously. Mm -hmm. I just want to make certain that you know, the community, you know, um, you know, get something there that's going to be benefit beneficial. Obviously, Walmart can be, but does it make sense for both the city and the community? That's what I'm concerned about. Thank you for your response. Thank, thank you, sir. All right, if that concludes the preliminary questioning, gentlemen, I trust it does, we're going to be moving to the public hearing. Now, let me explain a few things, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody who desires to speak will be given an opportunity to do so. We do ask that number one, don't be repetitive. If the issue has already been read into the record, it's not necessary to re re repeat the same statement 10 times over. Uh, second, when you rise to speak, you will be asked to read into the microphone your name and your residential address. This is a public record, we need to have that information, all right? Also, remember this is a business session. Try to leave your emotions in the chair, all right? Now, what we're gonna do, your, your chairman up here has type two diabetes and needs occasional breaks. So before we proceed any further, we're going to be in recess till a quarter two. It's about seven and a half minutes by that clock. That'll give me time enough to make the men's room and get back up here. <laughs> and at that time, we're gonna go ahead and open the public hearing. 
and have each of you speak as necessary, all right? Yes, yeah, so there are refreshments for the board just outside the door. We are in recess. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to reconvene the Planning Commission. Now, there's one other item I want to explain to you tonight, because unless you've been through this business of land development regulations and requests for rezonings, you, you, you tend not to understand the process. There are going to be two issues in front of us tonight. The first issue that we're dealing with for you is an amendment to the land development regulations. Depending upon what happens with that, we then go to the next item on the agenda, which would be a rezoning of the multifamily property area. So for tonight, right now, we're going to be dealing with the, the amendment to the land development regulations as it affects the 3.7 acres that are currently zoned multifamily. That's the issue that the Planning Commission needs to be able to address and make a recommendation on. And so you need to, to the extent possible, try to focus your comments in that area and understand it's a two-step process. We first do land development, then depending upon what happens, we go to the next item mm -hmm. on the agenda, we go through this whole process again, and then we address the zoning change. And at that point, that would be a quasi-judicial hearing Speakers would be sworn in. It moves to a little bit higher standard. All right? So now, just for the sake of information, do we have anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this current request? I see no hands. All right? <laughs> just, you know, need to take a head count here. All right? Those wishing to speak against the proposal, let's see a show of hands. Okay. The thundering herd. Yes, well, we're going to have our thundering herd tonight, and our cloud of dust shall rise in the back. Now, you all, each of you is entitled to three minutes. We'll be eternally grateful if you use less than your three minutes. We ask that all the speakers... Be ready to form a line down the center aisle and use the microphone to my right. That would be your left, okay? All right. Public hearing is open. First person wishing to speak to this. Mr. Chair, they could use both podiums, can't they? They, they could, but the, the developer is over there, and he's got his PC and what have you, so. Shouldn't we just have them? Uh, may I it's all right. May, may I make a suggestion that, that not everybody stand up? May I make a suggestion that not everybody stand up? But we have we load, but we load both podiums. As there's a speaker in one, as there's a speaker at one podium, the next person gets ready. They speak, the next person gets ready, and it works pretty well. At council it meetings. It'll it'll but speed things up here just a little. But bit. when you see a podium empty, please go up and fill that spot and get on the on cue, please. Well, I don't think you'll to need you. to. I think you know, you we we just need to get an idea of how the audience is flowing forward. When the line gets shorter, we know we're getting near the end. All right, first speaker to my right. Good evening. My name is Kevin Burns, 2065 Alamanda Drive. Members of the Planning Commission and members of the audience, um, I just listened to an hour of a lot of uh, distraction, rhetoric, nothing that has to do with what the item is before you right now about the regulations. But don't be distracted. An audience, don't be distracted by what is being said. The developer already said that he does not own the property. He would like <coughs> to change the zoning of additional property, even though two and a half acres that would easily accommodate <coughs> the store that they want to put is already there, yet they want to add, with your blessing, taking away residential, 
and making it more commercial to enhance the value <laughs> of that property, yet we're being told how important it is to us that Walmart grocery store comes in and we never knew we what we were missing. <laughs> that it's going to benefit our lives just so much. <laughs> Folks, do you know how the zoning got there? Only two years ago, the city of North Miami, that was not part of the city of Miami, North Miami. That property was annexed into the city without the votes of the community, of course. And we kept the existing zoning that the county had. So when staff says, oh, it's part of the comprehensive plan and it went to Halley, that was all legally stuff. And by the way, you guys ended up approving it and probably didn't know about it. It wasn't like the process that we went through for a year to go over the land, the comprehensive plan that you all worked on for a year and you, you saw every piece of property and how it was going to be zoned. You didn't have that opportunity to the detail that they're trying to make it out to be. We accepted what the county zoning was. The council voted on it. You all voted on it. And it moved forward for uh, our comprehensive plan in, in the state. That's how it got to that zoning. Two and a half acres on 135th Street. Commercial is plenty to make that business done. This is a different battle that the, the residents will have. As you said, the commercial is there. Let's deal with it. As the developer says, we're going to go another way if you're not successful here. So why would you encourage an additional three acres, three and a half acres, going into a residential neighborhood, upsetting 500 people out here that have put their money, made that community come back, why would you do that just so they can get a bigger piece of commercial property to cram it with more commercial development that's not necessary? And Griffin Boulevard, by the way, regardless of all these covenants that the city's going to do, the covenants are nonsense. You're going to connect to the sewer anyway. You're going to connect to the water anyway, whether it's 50 feet away or 500 feet away. You, you are going to, the county dictates that particular road. Folks, it's not necessary. Please don't be confused. Don't add hardship to the community that is on a rebel on their own. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me those extra minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. That was Kevin Burns, former mayor of our city. Next. Yes, into the, is your, is it on? It, it may not be on. Push the button, yes, no. There we go. Technology, huh? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, member of the board, <laughs> the public, my name is Jacques Despinos, 95 Northeast 131 Street, resident, homeowner, and a former councilman for this city, which I love so much. That piece of land is belonging to us. We the public. Whether we have 60,000 residents of the city of North Miami, but the 500 who signed this petition are very important. I don't know if you drive around the neighborhood, Breeze Street, and up and up. Every resident from the 500 are doing everything they can to keep the house in good shape, can clean. We want to keep it that way. But I've been living where I, I said 95 Northeast 131 and allow voting for a Walmart. It's like bringing this thing in my living room. <laughs> it's totally unacceptable. I wish the city can find something to contribute to the enhancement of the city for the kids to do something nice. We've been asking for it. We say we have no money. We get money coming from this and We got some money coming. We can do it now at least. Let's do something for the people. Thank you. Yeah. Right, thank you, Jacques. Next. Good evening, members of the commission. My name is Ann Cates. I live at 13939 Northwest First Avenue, not in North Miami, but close enough, five or six blocks from this application. My history in this area, I was raised in Miami Shores, moved to my house in 65. I've seen the community change. I remember the Pfluger Taxidermy Place on West Dixie. It was the smelliest building in Dade County. Uh, anyway, at the meeting last night, a member of your, your planning committee or department said that North Miami needs more green space. Well, you've got a big chunk of green space right here on 135th Street that would be perfect for a park. 
to, to put a, a commercial development in this area would be a travesty to these surrounding neighbors. I ve venture to say that they all moved here like I did for the peace, peaceful, quiet, green, rural type community. And when North Miami, you've already committed one travesty on them, you annexed them and overnight their ad valorem taxes went from two mills, 1.9 mills, to whatever yours is, which is around eight. So they, you quadrupled their ad valorem taxes and now you're going to devalue their property by allowing, if you do, by allowing this big box store and all the parking and all the traffic and all the trash and everything else that a Walmart generates. What this, if this is granted, this is the beginning of turning 135th Street into an east-west 7th Avenue, especially if you're going to get the 2,200 units on the corner of 135th and 6th Avenue. I mean, it's bad enough now without either one of those projects. Nobody, you can't move on 135th Street <coughs> anymore. Um, okay. Well, I just want, that's the point I wanted to make because you're, you're going to add insult to injury to, to keep, and you should keep this green spot green and don't accommodate the developer. Accommodate your citizens. 550 people on a petition is phenomenal. And just for the record, because my time is about up, I want to point out that the representative for the developer applicant offered something of value to a member of this commission in exchange for granting this application. <laughs> and the I want to point out the member did not accept the offer, but I feel that this application is now ethically tainted and should be withdrawn, and that's my opinion. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Galados, Mr. Is, is, is the commission entitled or should inquiry be made as to that allegation? Yeah. Uh, you can wait after all of the public commentary, or otherwise you may want to address that point I, I, I uh, think immediately. Well, I'd like to take that head on because I, I like to, f if, if, if somebody was offered a bribe, then we should be at the state attorney's office. I, I, I agree. Um, <laughs> but we Please. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, this, this is, speak, this is th I was just going to say that uh, there's a lot of hearsay being said, um, and nothing is, n n none of these statements are made under oath. So uh, please value what you're listening to accordingly. Yes. Give it the weight, the evidentiary weight that it that it deserves. Okay. This was not made under oath. No. No. And um, and unless there's proof. Um, you know, it's it's to me is hearsay. I think I think we should continue Mr. with the Walden. questions from the public. Yeah, just a minute, <coughs> Mr. Wallen, Do you want to address that? I, I'm happy to, Mr. Chairman. This was Frank Wolin's very poor attempt at a joke. Um, it was probably a joke in bad taste. Uh, however, it was a joke. It was intended to be a joke. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Ladies Chief Each did not take my joke seriously. Who? You. In what, other words, what did you ever have a conversation with me about this project? I never did. You're darn right. You never did. Of course not. <laughs> so, so in the course of my discussion, I made a joke, basically to suggest that you would be a nice greeter at Walmart, and that I am. I'm. I'm Ladies just letting you all know, because I was the one who made the statement, so I'm the best person to shed light on it, and certainly my intention was to make a joke, and I'm sorry that anyone took it as anything other than that. Thank you. I think it was a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was nothing uh, serious. Frank, given your experience in this business, I think his reference was that you're old, like I me. Cannot, right. Excuse me, just let me clear up. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, I was in law enforcement for 33 years. Mm -hmm. I served seven years in the military, was wounded three times. I have never, never, and I resent that, I have never taken a nickel, looked the wrong way on a crime, took a bribe, looked that just infuriates me. 
Uh, it just absolutely infuriates. I don't find it funny. No, I didn't. I, I don't find it funny. funny. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Our next speaker, sir. Hi, my name is. My name is Dan Schneiger. Uh, I live at 385 Northeast 131st Street. Um, and I think I have a slightly different perspective than a lot of people in this room, and that's why I, I would like to say something. Um, I am former senior project architect for Target Corporation. Uh, I am the person who did developments like this uh, all across the country, um, putting together multi-purpose retail developments uh, in urban areas, New York City, downtown uh, Miami, Midtown, um, downtown Chicago, and in the middle of cornfields in Kansas. And, you know, we, I used to come to these meetings, I was the guys who are sitting right behind me, and I was the guy who would come here and tell you what a great thing this was for our, your city. And I'm here to tell you, this is a disaster. I can look at this site plan right now and it bears zero resemblance to what the gentleman behind me has been describing. It says right here, full access on third court in three different places. That's completely different than what we were just told. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanna make clear. Um, so, and I just wanna point out, you know, I've been coming down here to North Miami for about seven years and I've seen the progress that's been made in the neighborhood. Uh, along Griffin Boulevard, along Third Court. There have been two houses purchased and completely rehabbed and resold and another one on the way. Um, if this development happens, those houses aren't worth a whole lot. There, I'm looking at the site plan that we some reason couldn't put back up here. There are two houses literally on an island hemmed in by a Walmart parking lot. As residential homes, their value is zero. That it will be a Popeye's <laughs> and a Boston market in five years. <coughs> That's what that will be. Um, another thing I just want to address, something that was said about pricing, about how great it will be that we're bringing a store in that's 25 to 35% prices below their competitors. Well, that is only true until they put their competitors out of business <laughs> because that's what we used to do at Target. As soon as Presidente goes out of business, their prices go right back up and even higher than where they were. So it's just, it's just not true. And there's a lot of things that have been said that are just kind of not true. And I know that because I'm the guy who used to come here and tell you these things. <laughs> so in summary, I just wanna say I'm not against retail on this site, but any retail that goes on there should be built within the current zoning. There is a place for retail on this site and I'm in favor of it. I'm, some people will disagree with me, but that's my opinion. And um, I just ask that you do not change the zoning on this project. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. <laughs> Next. My name is Roger Gordon. I am the uh, co-chairman of the uh, Biscayne Gardens Municipal Advisory Committee. We've been doing the last 12 years a study for the incorporation of the Biscayne Gardens area. I live at 14020 North Miami Avenue, have been there for 42 years. Know this area well, it was part of the Biscayne Garden uh, ad Municipal Advisory Area and before you all took it in uh, 2013. And I don't begrudge that. I think your strategy of trying to find some open spaces for more, more people is a good idea to cram a, a Walmart in here. I'll, I can start out where I left off yesterday the only green spaces in a Walmart center are found inside the cash registers. <laughs> this, this is a bad idea. Mr. Babbitt is out to make himself a million dollars. He couldn't find anybody to buy on this. He told you Walmart's strategy. They want to do 500 of these things because it's their new growth aspect to keep their stock price up because they're so big they can't grow anymore. That's not our problem. The issue here is, and I would suggest you might offer an amendment to this ordinance, uh, the, 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 the plan that's on the table here, that you in fact roll back the commercial zoning that's on the frontage and put it into A4. Then you turn around and look at this as a PUD for developing it and put in 100 residents. If you build a, anything like a Walmart, it will compete with the surrounding stores. You will lose over 100 jobs trying to gain 90 and you'll put a whole bunch of independent businessmen and women out of business. And we're not looking for that. Now, the traffic issues are horrendous if you turn this into a large retail site. You don't have any travel coming down from the north. 
135th Street will be so crowded, everybody will be taking back roads, and they will force the issue. And they will be coming down Memorial Highway from the north, they'll be coming up Griffin Boulevard from the south, taking shortcuts, running through the neighborhoods. It will be a traffic disaster. This man has made no studies of that. This is just a wild ass guess on his part, quite <laughs> frankly, that he can pull this off. And Walmart is desperate to find 500 locations because it turns out it's a dumb idea building 40,000 40, square foot grocery stores. Publix doesn't do it anymore. Winn-Dixie already went bankrupt once with that concept. It doesn't work anymore for them. And he's sold it on a speculation and he doesn't have a firm deal and if he gets this zoning, he's going to give you a bait and switch. And you're going to wind up with a retail uh, grouping there that makes no sense. Now, if he had done any studies, he'd know that the, hydro the, the hydrostatic pressure in the ground in the water table, when we get 12 inches of rain, will drive water up through the pavement on 135th Street south uh, on, on North Miami Avenue south of 135th Street. Last time we had 18 inches of rain, I was driving on there and there was water coming up five inches through the pavement. All that water goes that way toward this parcel. That drainage ditch he thinks is abandoned is because he doesn't understand the topography at all. He is a real estate salesperson. And that is a flood area. That is designed. It can't be capped, and the planning uh, people are exactly right. It can't be capped because it's got to carry water when we got heavy rain. Otherwise, other people get flooded, not from the running water on the surface, but the water we coming up in the ground from the places we west we and north. We understand the point, sir, but your time is up. Okay. But I recommend you make this a, make this all residential and get rid of all the commercial and start planning the other direction. Thank you, sir. And you could make 100 new units for people, affordable housing in this community. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Laura Hill. I, I live at 13075 Griffin Boulevard. I'm very close to this development. Um, what I want to talk about is the concept of advanced objectives. Does this development advance our objective in the city of North Miami? I think another way to say that is, does this fit into our vision going forward as a city? We have a neighborhood that has as somebody else suggested, really come up. It's, it's been up, it's been down. And now it's coming back up. That's a lot like North Miami as a whole. We've seen good times and sure we have seen bad times. I moved in to this city during a bad time. I saw potential in this city and I said, you know, I'm gonna be part of this potential. We, we bought our house, we fixed it up and we invested into it. Now, you can look all over America for examples of how much investment Walmart has made in the community, but we're not talking about other people's communities. We're talking about our community. We're talking about North Miami. Is Walmart the vision we have when we look at the future of North Miami? Are we looking to say, hey, we're gonna take some cash from a developer who doesn't really invest in us. Walmart will not invest in us, but you know who's investing in us? Every day, the people who own houses in these areas who are working to bring the neighborhoods up, to raise their children, and, and who will stay here. Walmart may fail in 10 years. Sears is going out of business, Kmart. But you know what? When I was knocking on doors collecting those signatures, I spoke to people who have lived here for 35 years, raised their children here, retired here, and <coughs> now the city is gonna come and say, hey, you invested in us, but we're not gonna invest in you. We're gonna bring this atrocity to your neighborhood, bring your property values down, and make it a nuisance for your children to play in the area. My children, and I have two, and they will probably go to school in North Miami, and perhaps I will one day get a knock on my door asking me to sign a petition. But what I'm telling you is, Walmart and this developer is not going to invest any more in North Miami than they have to. They will not invest any more than they have to. So we can take the cash now, but the future going, is that our vision? Is that what we want to tell Miami? Hey, this is, what North, this is the way North Miami is going. We're going the way of Walmart. Well, I think Walmart is going this way because America has had enough of Walmart. We want middle class ha neighborhoods. 
we want the kind of citizens that we have in this neighborhood who are who are fixing up their properties, who are showing up at community meetings, who are here tonight. That's what we want in our community. That is the people who's gonna bring the good vision to North Miami that's going to build North Miami back up to what it used to be. So that's what I'd like to say. All right, thank you. Good evening, Beverly Hilton, 12495 Northwest 6th Avenue. Good evening, gentlemen. Good, Good evening, evening, Beverly. Residents. I, I actually, I didn't come here this evening for a meeting, and I was so, I'm was i so in sync with the group. I wore my shirt, <laughs> not, even, not even knowing when I came, and they said, all these red shirts, I'm like, wow, you know? Come on up here, move. <laughs> yeah, I'm not exactly in the, the neighborhood, but I drive 135th Street, and the traffic is unbelievable. Can you imagine putting a Walmart right there? Th and th the na the resident, you know, their investment, they invest in this in their homes, and this is going to bring down their investment. Why are we doing this? You know, th this the these developers, I'm sure he would not want this in his backyard. <laughs> you know. Would you live next to a Walmart? Would you live next to a Walmart? I, would, I don't want it in my backyard. I, I, I don't want it on 135th. I have a recommendation, though. 7th Avenue. Yeah. You want to bring a Walmart? 7th Avenue, 132nd and between 34th. That Walmart would be welcome there. I had something else to say. I, had my thing. I left my notes in the car. But um, that's my recommendation, 135th Street and uh, one th 7th Avenue, 132nd, and for uh, a Walmart. All right, thank you, Beverly. Yeah, right by the model, yeah, 6. <laughs> yes, th okay. thank you, Beverly. So, yeah, we thank got you. it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Fred Gottlieb. I own two homes on Northeast Third Court. The following address are this, 13228 Northeast Third Court, 13241 Northeast Third Court. My properties compose approximately almost one acre of land. If you allow this to happen, you will take my backyard where I have birds and I have trees and I have tranquility when I come home after a hard day's work and you will ruin it. I lived in Aventura before the mall was there. I went to Lear School in North Miami. I've watched this city grow. Taking Walmart and putting it in my backyard, excuse my French, it would be shitting on my foot. Thank you very much and have a good night. My name is Gwen West, and I live at 13090 Griffin Boulevard, which I've lived there since 1992. And sir, um, you said nobody wants to be on, on that property that you're developing, but I want you to know that I want to be at 13090 Griffin Boulevard. I've lived there and I've seen changes happen. You know, I've seen canals being closed. I've seen s street lights being put up. I've seen all type of businesses come and go. I've seen the commissioners come and go, new mayors. A lot of nice things has, has happened in this community. But I, what I haven't seen, sirs, I have not seen you correct the drainage and the sewage. In um, approximately about 2005, 2006, the sewage overflowed. Uh, Mr. Burns was the mayor at that time, and your city had to come and actually pump sewage from underneath my house. And we had to move out of that house in order to try to get the house fixed. I live in such a low um, level where when we have water, when it rains, I live on a corner of 131st and Griffin Boulevard, and when it rains, water settles underneath my house today. The city has not been able to correct that problem in the 20 plus years that I've lived there. So how is it that we can expect 
Walmart and the developers to come in and fix it overnight. Impossible. Also, the pumping station is a hundred, just approximately about a hundred feet from my back door. When it breaks down, I get the footage. I get the sewage. Me. When it rains, I get the rain. Mr. Despino, along with Doran Robe, they came in and put in my driveway a French drain. But the, f the water don't go anywhere from one side to the other. And when it fills up, guess what happens? Underneath my house. Last year, the side of my house where the kitchen is fell in. I had to resurface the ground. The earth is, is, is uh, moving away. I was in... Um, Mr. Um, the, the, city the city manager's office, and they said, why haven't you moved from there yet? <laughs> but let me tell you something. When this started to happen to me, I was going through a divorce with three kids. The, the housing industry, the, I mean, it was out, out of the roof. Where was I going? Now that they've graduated from high school, some have, a couple have graduated from college, still one in college, where am I going now? All of my money is piled into 13090 Griffin Boulevard. You said that you're going to be making a right turn into Walmart off of one, one um, off of Griffin Boulevard. So where do you come? You're going to come from 125th Street, Time. right down one thir one d down Griffin Boulevard. So is that fair? That I have to suffer more and more and more and more. It's time that the city. It's time for you to do something about my issue. I know everybody in here have an issue, but I have the worst issue, the sewage and the water, and I am totally sick of it. All right, thank you very much. My name is Monica Lutz. I live at 441 Northeast 134th Street. Um, I have lived in this neighborhood approximately eight years, of which I have been a homeowner for the last four years. My husband and I, we have completely remodeled our house. We have everything we own plus debts are into this house. It's on 134th Street. You're talking about bettering. 135th Street is so busy as it is. Everybody takes shortcuts through 134th Street. The traffic, there's so much traffic. That building that is going to go on 6th Avenue and 135th Street with 90 units. Then we're going to have Walmart. And a lot of traffic is going to be diverted through 134th Street and then going up 4th Avenue into 135th Street again. And that is going to decrease our property value significantly, a lot. Um, not only have the residents bettered our homes, because I see in the last eight years how that neighborhood has risen and become beautiful, but the city itself, the city has helped make the neighborhood so much more beautiful. I see roundabouts. I see sidewalks. I see so much being done. So what, to waste the money? To throw it in the garbage and say let's all the traffic go through? Crime. We've had so much crime. We've had a neighborhood watch. Our neighborhood has really united. I mean, we've practically become best friends around our neighborhood because everything we've gone through. We've had the problem with the home on 135th Street and 4th Avenue that there's always thefts, and we have found that we have found with the police that they put the things that they steal behind a dumpster on that property. And now you're gonna bring me another another big property. So, so yes, no, and um, and also light pollution. I mean, the light from the cars is going to be insane until what time is this going to be open? And if it's not Walmart, if it's any big box store, let's keep our neighborhood residential and the debris and the sidewalks and the streets from people having their soda from McDonald's and throwing it out of the window. Have you walked around that neighborhood that's being beautified and have you seen how much garbage 
is out on the sidewalks. I walk my, name, my dogs twice a day, in the morning when I before work and in the evening, and I see so much garbage, it's, it's sad. And that's not going to get better with any, any big business on that location. I, that's, I think that's it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Howard Tonkin. I live at 12600 Griffin Boulevard. That is Boulevard, not Memorial Highway. It's called Griffin Boulevard. Okay. On this day of January 6, 2015, I would like to ask the city of North Miami, do you have a plan for rising sea level? What's the plan, guys? Miami Beach has a plan. They have spent $15 million on pumps and have budgeted a further $500 million for 58 pumps. What's the plan, North Miami? The whole world is watching Miami. This is the article in Rolling Stone we had printed for you guys. It's titled, it's titled, uh, uh, what, why, why the city of Miami is doomed to drown. It's because of stupid projects like this with no idea of a sustainable future for our city. So where is our city leaders leading us? We've got, we've got our, our neighbors telling us about flooding already. Have you looked at a to topographical map of my neighborhood? Because the land is at or below sea level. In addition to that, you cannot just arbitrarily rezone our neighborhood. My, the city, the, the, the county had the land zoned away for a certain reason. The land has never been built on for a certain reason. It is a swamp, and a swamp is not a dirty word. It's, it's a degraded habitat. But within that degraded habitat is one of the last stands of royal palms in South Florida, because all of the other palms were stolen from the Everglades by developers. This last stand of royal palms is critical habitat for the endangered palm warbler and should never be touched. You talk about the north and south accesses. So you're going to bring big trucks at 5 o'clock in the morning or all through the night up my street? No way. The, the bridge on Memorial Highway cannot sustain trucks. It's not built for that. You can't just arbitrarily rezone. There is a river in a pipe that runs through that piece of land. Our neighborhood all drains into that piece of land. Walmart can't build a moat around it and worry about what's the water on their land. The whole neighborhood drains into that land. You must mitigate the water that floods our neighborhoods for a city of the future. If you do not mitigate the water flooding, you're condemning us to flooding our neighborhoods. Last night, when I was at the meeting and I tried to go over a little bit about of the science of this, I had the eye rolls and the looks and my conversation was, was distracted and I don't feel there's any sincerity what I saw from our city officials last night with the nudge, 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 wink, wink at, Wal wink, wink at Walmart. They're not representing us. If you go through this project, we won't collect 500 signatures. We'll collect 5,000 signatures and we will keep going and we will never let you build in our neighborhood. And if Walmart does not go over onto 441, we will chase them out of town. They will not come into our neighborhood. We, w we, w we are motivated and we are together and we are not having this happen. Here's your articles to read. Thank you. How you doing? My name is Jose Rivera. I live on 13325 Northeast Third Court, the same block. My neighbor said he, he'll, he'll get shit on his foot. <laughs> Listen, these guys over here, they don't care about us. They care about money. They want to see their pockets fat. That's all they want. Now, what I don't understand, at 163rd Street, there's a Walmart there, a huge Walmart. You go to 441, there's another huge Walmart. It's what, 5, 10, 15 minutes away? Why do we need that in our neighborhood? You've heard everybody say the traffic. I don't know what to talk about because everybody's hit it on the money. These people just want to make money. They don't live in our neighborhood. And I'll tell you what, if they did, they'd be on our side of the fence. Okay? They wouldn't be thinking about the green. That's all I want to say. All right, thank you. <laughs> Next, your turn. Yes, my, my name is Sylvia Mayolo. Are you, I know, but it's much better now. I came to the North Miami 15 years ago. 
the neighborhood uh, was very, very bad. My friends were afraid that something happened to me. But little by little, I believed that we human could build something and could be better. My daughter in law just spoke before, Monica Lutz. They build their own house. They have a beautiful neighborhood. At this moment, before I didn't have a, any grandchild, I have six grandchildren now. And I believe in freedom and a right. I think this is very utopic sometimes to believe in this kind of thing, and this time when business is very important. But we have to have the freedom to choose the place we want to live and to enjoy the place. And we have to have the right to say not to Walmart. That's it. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Denise Valdemar. I live in 13250 Northeast Third Court. The Walmart is right in my backyard. What am I going to say to my kids about the crime? Since uh, the developer was talking about crime and not Miami. So if he wants to bring more crime, do I have to relocate with my kids? What am I going to tell them? The blue, the wall, the, the white spot you were, you were showing when I was looking, I was smiling because it's right in my, in ba in right back in my house. That's what I want to say. I don't want no harm out there because I would like my kids to go up and then so I can keep going with them there. So Walmart is no no for me. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, my name is uh, Robin Cargill. I will reside at 13135 Northeast Third Court. So I'm directly on the block where Walmart would uh, would develop. Uh, I'm not opposed to all development. Um, the, but I firmly believe that the front two acres is sufficient for commercial development in that area. I see no legitimate reason for you to consider rezoning, you know, what was legitimate zoning of, of uh, residential of those other lots. Um, I also think that the six acres of that full site is way too large of a development for our residential neighborhood. Um, the Existing traffic issues on 135th would get much worse. Nobody's mentioned that there are two schools, only blocks mm -hmm. in one direction with significant school zones, which slow 135th to an absolute crawl in that area. Also, on Griffin Boulevard or Memorial Highway on the other side, there's a school directly, that charter school is directly at Walmart's proposed entrance. I expect fully that that Griffin Boulevard Memorial Highway entrance would be the delivery truck entrance for Walmart, which would put, um, I don't believe that they would do limited use. I think, I don't see a truck entrance to the front. Most development, most stores have delivery trucks around the side. So I think Griffin would end up being the, the uh, entrance for delivery trucks, which would be right at that school, which I think is also unacceptable. Um, the, I also agree that those two houses that did not sell have a right to maintain their, their home and their value and their rights as homeowners and having their entire properties um, surrounded by Walmart was certainly not what they uh, want as homeowners. And if they didn't sell, they should be considered for that. Uh, uh, it would devastate their home value. So I also think that that is most likely one of the larger tracks that exists in the city of North Miami and should be very carefully considered for any development. Um, you know, for community character, for um, things that would benefit the community. We also have Publix not four blocks away. We also have El Presidente not four blocks away and um, Winn-Dixie on Northwest 7th Avenue. I don't feel that a, uh, another grocery store really adds to the character or benefits the city and the community and um, the gas station, there's another gas station across the street, and we certainly have enough fast food. So I firmly oppose the, the rezoning, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, hi, my name is uh, Salvador Barreiros. I live at 13070 Northeast 4th Avenue. 
Um, I just wanted to express my opposition to to the rezoning. Um, I think uh, we moved we moved into the neighborhood and bought our house in 07 uh, with my wife. We started our family. We have two kids, four, uh, five, and seven years old. Um, I can tell you, to me, our our little neighborhood is like an oasis. People from all over Dade County come to our house. We invite them over, and they would never guess that those houses sit where they sit and are the way they are. Um, there's two kinds of people that live, into the that live in that neighborhood. People that have moved in, bought houses, fixed them up, or people that have lived there for years and years and years and years. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out. The Pope study he mentioned about the increasing values, that's for, it was measured from, I think, 2001 to 2006. I think if you had a lump of crap on the ground in those years, it went up in value. <laughs> so if we want to talk about being honest and misrepresenting things, represent that. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's just no point to having it there. If you want a depressed area, you want to bring jobs, everyone said it. It, 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 it can't be any clearer, Seventh Avenue. It cannot be any clearer. I mean, that's, that's what I have to say. All right, thank you. Uh, yes, hi, my name is Dion Chirible. I live on 13390 Northeast 4th Court. Um, I am a wife. I, I have two children. Um, that street that uh, we're talking about, we, I'm pretty much on the corner of 134. So that would be the street, the street that my children play on, would be the street that these shortcuts, these millions of cars that come from God knows where will be barreling down my street, um, causing uh, uh, not only the traffic, but of course the, the foot traffic, you know, the littering that's gonna go on with that. The um, Walmart shopping carts will probably be lined up and down my street as well. Um, we're, we're also talking about um, the green space. Okay, first of all, we have a problem in Miami where we live with crime, okay? A lot of the crime that's committed in our neighborhood is by the youths, the children, the kids. Why? Because they have nowhere to go. There's no green spaces. You should have to be able to walk to a park. You should, okay, I have the luxury of driving to a park. I can go to a million parks. These kids don't, they have to walk. Where do they walk to? They don't, they go to the neighborhoods and they get in trouble. This would be a fantastic spot for children, for something for the children to do, to keep them out of trouble. You know, we don't really always have the luxury of picking our neighbors, but at this point, we do. We, 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 at this point, we can pick and choose who our neighbors are gonna be, and Walmart is not gonna be one of my neighbors. I'm sorry, thank you. Can you Go hear ahead. me? My name is Sarah McDevitt. I live at 14490 Northeast 10th Avenue. I'm a little bit out of the neighborhood where most of these people are coming from, but I have equal concerns, especially about traffic on 135th, et cetera. But my husband and I also own a small business in North Miami. And as small business owners and property owners for our business as well as our home, you know, just the idea of bringing in a, proper, a project like this concerns us so much. You know, we see how small businesses are being reinvigorated right now. There's so much emphasis, you know, the president even talks about small business, et cetera. And when I think about what a Walmart would do in that area, when you have right there commercial properties that are semi-blighted and not well taken care of, the few businesses that exist in the commercial spaces near there would be completely annihilated by a big box store. How can we consider a big box store in an area like that where really what we need to do is support the small businesses we have and think about reinvigor reinvigorating small businesses in our area in general. Um, so that's what I'd like to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. All along State 135th Street, oh sorry, my name is Belkis Zarati okay. and I reside at 13395 Northeast 4th Court. I'm a proud resident of the city of North Miami. I've been there numerous years and I would like to say that all along 135th Street from east to west, there are single family homes. We have some multifamily buildings, but it's generally a residential neighborhood from 125th Street to 135th Street from I-95 to the Bay. We have a majority of residential 
a residential concentration with a d downtown that's going to be redeveloped. And I'm saying this because after listening to the verbiage that was read here tonight in this ordinance, I feel that the city of North Miami, the staff, is not truly aware of what is consistent with the intent of the city of North Miami. The city of North Miami is the residents that are here tonight. I don't know if um, you noticed that there's a color scheme going on. I would like to thank the gentleman sitting over there that spoke earlier, Mr. Babbitt, because on December 15th of last year, 2014, we came together at his request and we learned that, you know what? We, the residents of North Miami, we have a vision that you keep hearing over and over. We know what's consistent with the intent of the city of North Miami, not what was read here tonight. And that vision brought us together and we all decided to wear red. We decided to wear red from December 15th till today. There's been a number that's been thrown around about 500 plus signatures. That's what we gathered in less than that because we reconvened that Saturday. And it's been said, and I'll repeat it, we're not going to let this die down. We are going to go forward every which way. The city of North Miami has a very muddy past and I would hate to see that, that continue. This is the opportunity for us to move forward. 43,560 square feet. That is the size of one acre. 43,560 square feet. 2.2 acres. This is what the gentleman is, has the ability to work with, but he wants to go beyond that. Why are we going to let someone who doesn't own the land, who doesn't live in the city of North Miami, he's told us he lives in Aventura, he's not part of this community. The other gentleman that represents him, how are we going to allow them to come into our neighborhood and take over and have this huge land mass in our neighborhood? It's not gonna happen. And whatever it takes, the people that are here in red and the ones that did not wear red, we're not gonna let it happen. So. Uh, We'll be here and we'll be everywhere else. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Your turn. Hi, my name is Jamie Marie Olson. I live at 13135 Northeast Third Court. I moved in in 2009. Um, I was a single woman moving into the North Miami neighborhood. I looked for a house for three to four years trying to find a house in my price range. And I actually really liked, I really love my neighborhood. I looked at, I've been to every single house, I think in 2009, that was in my price range, that was for sale. And this one was by far the best. It's beautiful, the neighborhood is, is beautiful, I love it. There's trees, people that come to visit are like, you live in North Miami? I thought North Miami was not pretty. And it is, it's beautiful where we live. And we're lucky for that. And this Walmart would, would ruin it. And <laughs> um, I'm lucky I met my, I met my husband um, actually through theft. Um, there was, <laughs> 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 I've had three th thefts in my house um, so far. Um, <laughs> uh, my husband is an insurance adjuster. <laughs> and <laughs> ask, what did he take? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't take anything, but so far they've taken the Ooh. air conditioning, which and was the first theft, um, basically when I bought my house. And um, but the the neighborhood is improving. We're we're looking to improve our house. Um, we want to do a lot of renovations on our house to make our house better. But with Walmart potentially coming in, <laughs> you know, it makes it makes me want to move and it's that's very sad cuz I'm a good resident and good citizen and a voter and all that. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is uh, Pemshinat Moret. Living at 120. Not this 129 suite. I'm a home a homeowner in good standing <laughs> and a resident of North Miami for 33 years. When I moved in North Miami, North Miami was a beautiful place. 
for people to live, to raise their children. Here in North Miami, everything was nice and beautiful. You could have every service at and reach. For me, I have one slogan, North Miami first. I understand many officials here that could rent a room and after nine months, 12 months, they become the mayor, city commissioner. <laughs> I want to open some parentheses. I think they should change the bylaw. To be an official here, you should be living at least three years in North Miami. We have one Walmart at the mall on 163th Street, one at the Nordis, and another one by uh, Jackson North over there on 441. We don't want another one in our heart here. We don't want to be part of that Walmart triangle. So we want to keep North Miami beautiful. We want the tourists to come here to go to Mocha. In North Miami, we have, we have only one hotel. One of my friend, my relative, come here to visit, coming from Montreal, from Boston, where my children live, from New York, okay. They come here, they spend the daytime with us, and they went to sleep somewhere else. Okay, we want to beautify the, the city. That no this corridor on 135th Street, it has to be beautiful. So we don't want a crime nursery around our, our, our house. Our, our, our I think you may have a short memory to know what happened in Walmart, maybe in October, late October, early November. Those youths that come to shoot and kill people about, uh, over there. Enough is enough. If you have short memory, we have a very long memory of that. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Kepler Verduga. I live in 12600 Griffin Boulevard. Um, I don't want to be repetitive. I think it's pretty clear that we don't want Walmart here in our neighborhood. So uh, I did a little research, and I was pretty easy to find negative stuff about Walmart. Uh, so basically, I just did this for you guys, which is highlight the negative effects that we'll, it will have in our, re in our residential neighborhood. Crime, traffic, how it will affect the local economy, uh, the environmental issues, and the property value. This is for you, okay, for you to read it, and I also have copies for everybody here. I don't want to go over, I did want to mention something about the crime. In this, what I found is in a national study of 551 Walmart stores, uh, and it was found that the average of rate of reported police incidents for each Walmart store was 400 to 1,000 percent higher than other stores and six times higher for serious and violent crimes. So I don't want that to happen in my neighborhood, and I might live just like two blocks away from it. So thank you. All right, thank you. Provide a copy of that, please, to the, to the, to the city staff and to the re secretary for the commission here. Distribute the copies there, thank you. All right. Now, I see that our lines are diminishing. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this issue? Perhaps you need to be moving to the front here. It's getting rather late, and we have uh, a number of issues yet to address tonight. All right, My sir. name is Cecil Clark, 13025 Northeast 3rd Avenue. I just want to reiterate what has already been said about the fact that we need to preserve more residential zoning. That place is not necessarily ideal for that kind of commercial development. I, as a matter of fact, it's in the back of my mind to come up with a plan to assist the residents in remodeling um, their homes. As a matter of fact, I'm a realtor, and it's difficult to find um, properties to, to offer to some of my clients, 
And um, I think we should put more emphasis on residential. Um, nobody actually said that before, but mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're forgetting that there is also another Walmart at 199th Street. And if Walmart wants to come in here, it is my suspicion that their intent is to replace some of the similar establishments that are already here. There is no right way of doing the wrong thing. So I say we should say no to that kind of development. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, I'm a private citizen. My name is Stanley Joseph Stafford, uh, Post Office Box 610488, Miami, Florida, 33261-0488. My concern is that my sister owns a piece of property uh, near the corner of um, uh, Griffin Boulevard and Northeast 127th Street. I don't know how many people here are aware of this, <coughs> but within the past, like, probably 18 months or something, there have been three major serious traffic accidents already to th uh, th that have been within sight of the uh, property that my sister owned. Uh, and um, one of them was a, a, a vehicle involved in a police chase. A Jaguar hit a power pole, knocked out power to a bunch of people in the neighborhood. Uh, two other major accidents um, was w were involving uh, a, a, a gentleman just next w w w got, got his fence crashed in, his front fence crashed in twice by speeding drivers. What I'm trying to say is this. Griffin Boulevard has bad enough traffic problems. And... When the, the whole thing, when they were presenting this plan, they had all these ideas about how to make sure to um, protect from traffic problems uh, and, and, and mitigate the traffic problems for the property owners up and down Northeast Third Court. Whether the property owners on Northeast Third Court feel that their traffic problems would be mitigated is a different story, but the, they were talking about this. It almost feels like there's discrimination against the property owners on Griffin Boulevard because there was far less attention paid to this and uh, I don't like the fact that a piece of property that my sister owns is, is going to be discriminated against, and she as a property owner is going to be uh, treated as second class to the people in Northeast Third Court, and even a lot of the people in Northeast Third Court are very dissatisfied with the amount of um, problems that, that, that they will, you know, or the amount that uh, the developer is trying to do and the city is trying to do to mitigate their own traffic problems. I hope this uh, rezoning does not go through, as a matter of fact, I don't even see any need for Walmart to put in a store on, on, uh, and the 2.2 acres that's already commercially zoned. As a matter of fact, I'm not here as a Walmart basher. I have shopped and will continue to shop on Northeast 163rd Street at that Walmart. I'm very glad to do so. I am uh, not interested in shopping on Northeast 135th Street and Griffin Boulevard at any Walmart that is built there because I find Northeast 163rd Street to be quite convenient. And like I say, I'm not a Walmart basher. I'm not an enemy of Walmart. I'm a Walmart customer. I don't think this project is even in the best interest of Walmart. And I think that sometimes uh, major companies can come up with ideas that are against their own best interest because just like the rest of us, we all screw Ten up, seconds. we all make mistakes, just as private citizens do. I think Walmart is making a mistake, and it's against their own best interest. Uh, and I hope they don't do it, and I hope that they don't do it for the citizens here. Thank you. further speakers to these to this point tonight no further speakers seeing no one else coming up the public hearing is closed all right gentlemen it is time for commission discussion on this point what is before us is an amendment to the land development regulations you understand that the rezoning is a separate issue to be addressed after this Time to hear from my left. Sure. Who's <laughs> 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 on the left? <laughs> I'll let you go last. I'll, I'll let you go last. <laughs> It'll be the same amount of time. <laughs> yes, I, I don't doubt that it will be. Uh, Jason, go ahead. Sure. Um, to me, you know, it, I don't know how much more clear it could have been. Uh, the, even the applicant himself said that the way that the property is on the, I guess, to the north are zoned are sufficient in order to develop commercial land. 
property um, a commercial or to support a commercial development. So I, I really don't see if, if the applicant s just plainly said that that's what is possible, why we need to go ahead and rezone anything. It doesn't seem like there's a true need or, you know, for us to, to change the way it is zoned today. So, you know, I, I, and that's not even going into the list of just the, the long list of conditions. Um, and that's just completely ignoring some of the deficiencies I see in the plan that was presented to us today. So uh, with that said, I really have no problem just making a motion to, to finish. Well, well, we'll let the others speak before we jump to the motion. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hold the motions till we get all the way around them. Then we can deal with motions. Mr. Ernst. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Speak into the Thank microphone, you, Mr. sir. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of uh, uh, accusations. We've heard a lot of uh, common sense opinions, uh, but the bottom line that comes down to is that we're trying to take a piece of property that's not that's already zoned for commercial, and just try to expand it to the liking of a developer who wants to on uh, uh, on his own determine that the commercial property that's there already is of no value. And who's to say that that property can't be developed or that somebody else would want to take that commercial property and expand, uh, expand it for, for a, a beautiful home or, or uh, uh, you know, a personal use and, and beautify it. Um, you have your commercial property up front. Um, to me, it's up to a developer to come in with a creative idea uh, if putting in a, a supermarket and a gas station and a fast food uh, chain is something that uh, the developer thinks is creative, uh, I think he has a problem. Uh, there's a lot of, of, of very creative developers out there, and I'm sure, I, I can almost guarantee you that over time, somebody will look at that property and, and, and the available amount of commercial property available will come up with something that's going to be far, far more creative than to put um, a 41,000 foot square supermarket, a gas station, and a fast food chain, and, and a whole lot of parking lot and cement. And uh, uh, I, I think you pretty much get an idea of the way that I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, vote for this. Uh, we, we have always stressed on this commission, and I think the rest of the uh, uh, commissioners will back you up. Um, you know, we want to side on, 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 on creativity and, and, and uh, innovation. Uh, w we want the right type of development in this community that will be uh, uh, long-lasting and something that will be vital and something that will contribute it, uh, to, to the neighborhoods and, and to the city as a whole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Mr. Castor, do you have any uh, comments? A absolutely. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone for gathering here today because um, it seems like um, the public really cares about the community. Yes, a group photo would be good, but <laughs> can we? <laughs> <laughs> but, but having said that, can we? <laughs> I, I believe I one mean, was taken already. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I was in it. <laughs> well, as I indicated before, well, when I asked the question to the developer, uh, he mentioned that uh, he believed that it makes sense for Walmart. Now, I shop at Walmart. I've gone to Walmart. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying I've, I frequent there a whole lot, but I have shopped at Walmart. And I, Walmart can be a great thing, but again, is it a great thing for this area? Is it a great thing for the city of North Miami and for the people who are living in that area where the developer is trying to build? And we've heard the public and everyone pretty much saying no, no, no. And I don't think they're saying no because they don't want to shop at Walmart. It just may not be a good fit uh, for this area. And the one gentleman uh, pointed out a good point, a uh, hotel. Uh, it's about time that we bring something beautiful in the city. Uh, it's time and um, I, again, there's a number of issues at place right now and if this is passed, there's gonna be more issues. So I think there's a lot of issues that needs to be resolved before, you know, um, I would even consider making a positive decision. All right, Mr. Each. I, uh, 
I concur with the comments that I heard from my fellow commissioners. I, I drove your neighborhood today, like I said earlier, in the part that was unincorporated. I came into the, uh, into the city just recently. I don't have a, a, a problem with developers or Frank even taking a job as a Walmart greeter. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> But oh, I think you'd be wonderful in that role, Kenny. Uh, I, my, <laughs> my, my temperament would be very nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I really don't have a, I, I don't have a problem. It's, it's really zoned commercial. I do have a problem which I feel the damage to the, to the surrounding neighborhood will do. That, that neighborhood's on the rebound. I, I looked at Griffin Boulevard uh, uh, and, and it's, it's spectacular. And I've seen some of the houses in the new area that, that we just annexed. And it was absolutely, uh, 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 I, I was amazed. Uh, you have a quality neighborhood there. And I honestly believe in all sincerity that this, I, 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 I'm, believe me, I'm pro-development. I want to see high rises go in and I want to see nice things happen uh, to this city. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, the creative uh, 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 parking garages that I've seen over on the beach, these spectacular things. Why can't we do that on that corner? We don't need another box store, a fast food restaurant, uh, something that's going to diminish the quality of life. That's preposterous. Well, you know, I, 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 let me just, years ago, Florida Power and Light put these big, gigantic transmission lines on 135th Street. Originally, they were scheduled to go to Biscayne Park and Miami Shores. Well, folks, you know what? Those two communities got up in arms because they're Tony communities, and you know what happened? They said, well, we'll stick it to North Miami, and we got stuck with it. Well, I'm damn tired of getting stuck with it. <laughs> All right? I, I'm tired of that. You know? and, and, and it just balls me. And, and again, if Walmart wants to come in with a beautiful building, something that we can be proud of, then I'm sure the people here would look at it and take it under advisement. But to come in with another box store, a fast food restaurant, and a, a gas station, no, I cannot go along with that. It would destroy the integrity of the neighborhood. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kenny. All right. Uh, as you requested, Mr. Prevachel, I'll let you go last, uh, but you don't get the honor of making the motion. Certainly, <laughs> that's that's fine. Thank you, Russia. All right. Um, yeah. In the honor of uh, water and Walmart, I, I wore my walrus mustache tonight. I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's only for the special occasion. Uh, I, I'm going to begin a little bit. Uh, let me clarify. I was at the meeting last night, and I did uh, approach the microphone. I was not going to the microphone to voice any sort of opinion, and uh, certainly wanted to uh, keep my judgment till hearing. Um, uh, all sides and all, all points. Uh, but the point was uh, that I was going to bring up was that we had an attendance last night uh, probably in excess of 100 people. And uh, that's really quite commendable. It's quite commendable. Uh, but you should know, and basically a lot of people raise their hands, uh, probably 80 people raise their hands that they're here probably for the first time. And it's because it's in your own backyard or your own immediate neighborhood or block away. But there have been issues in this city for month after month, particularly in this last year. Very difficult, sometimes horrendous things. Everything you have set up there of what you don't like and what you're fighting against, that happens on a daily basis around here, and nobody shows up. We have some council meetings and some, well, particularly our planning commission meetings, we have some planning commission meetings where there's zero, not a single seat is occupied on critical matters. So whatever the outcome of the vote tonight, I hope that Many, if not all of you, attend future meetings, council meetings, planning commission meetings, board of adjustment meetings, and please get involved because your, your value, your insight is, is important uh, for the good or bad, or you, whether you support something or you uh, reject something, and uh, really could be of, of great use. Regarding the plan, um, a lot of things have been said. Uh, I, I'm going to try to take the, uh, the approach more of uh, an urban design and... Uh, um, more of a um, composition uh, perspective on this. If you look at the immediate neighborhood, um, we have uh, the, the gas station, a convenience store, some uncared for land, that triangular piece of property uh, between the street as the street splits off is really not cared off, cared of much. It really could be a garden or something, but it's really 
uh, I hate to say it, it's rather lackluster. And I know it's not necessarily what the immediate neighbors have in their immediate neighborhoods and their house to house, but this area really uh, has not had much attention. And it's indicative of North Miami in many, many parts that very little care and attention has been given to it. And we throw a fast food and a gas station, this, that, and it's all haphazard. Nobody really cares, and nobody's cared for years and years and years. And it's taken, it's taken an awful long time on this board and to finally bring people around where we don't just rubber stamp something anymore and where we're trialy, finally letting uh, more common sense and good values uh, take place. Our Community Planning and Development Department does their job, and basically they do things by the numbers. But quite often the numbers don't make sense. Uh, sometimes you can do more than what they're proposing. Sometimes you need to do less than what they're proposing. Uh, the numbers are really just a guideline. And it's good to have that input, and it's good to have put things in perspective. This proposal is really just more of the same of what we have. You know, it's a, a big box store. It's uh, parking sprawled from end to end. It's just, just about every inch is paved over. Of course, there are a couple uh, islands that have landscaping on them to divide the parking. And then you have, you know, fast food and a gas station. It's not necessarily an attractive mix, and it's not something you would say, hey, that's a, that's a great place to visit. That's something new or inspiring or uh, uh, anything out of the ordinary. And I'm happy to say that of late, uh, we have not been doing as much rubber stamping. We've been questioning what's been submitted, and we're trying to go to a, a higher level of, um, of development, uh, something that's a little bit more caring, uh, something that is not sprawling, uh, something that's a little bit more humane and a little bit more understanding of the entire neighborhood and how it's composed. Uh, so I, I have a feeling I, I know where most of the votes will go tonight. I, I know I will, uh, because that the, the project uh, has already uh, commercial land available for them to do uh, something. I don't know if this was, let me back up, if this was such a great proposal that it required uh, using the extra land and commandeering that because it was uh, so inspiring, it was such a benefit to the neighborhood, and I think I might be for it. Uh, but because it is just that, it is more of the same, it is, it is more sprawl, uh, it works for the uh, potential occupants of this site, but not necessarily the neighborhood, uh, I know that I will be uh, uh, not in support of, of this. Uh All right, thanks Thank very sir. much, Mr. Prevatel. As I a point of order, Mr. Chair, yes. um, if you would like to uh, offer a rebuttal statement, should the applicant uh, wish one? I believe um, there was one reserved. Thank you, uh, Council, for that opportunity. We would waive the uh, rebuttal. Thank it you, Mr. Chair, you may proceed. The rebuttal might be more appropriate on the quasi-judicial side if we get to that point. All right, at this time, I think we've had all the discussion. Mr. James, do you wish to make a motion? Yes, make a motion to disapprove. Make a motion to disapprove, all right. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Reach. Anybody opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let the record reflect, 6-0. <laughs> <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, Settle down. There's, there's, there's more to this than meets the eye. Uh, we're getting to that. Thank you, madam. You can return to your seat now. Now, you need to know what happens next. We have to bring up the second part of this, which is the rezoning. Granted, we denied the land development regulation, which is this hand over here. Now we do a hearing on the rezoning. The rezoning will be a quasi-judicial hearing. Anyone speaking to that will do so under oath. Unless, of course, Mr. Wolin, the applicant, chooses to gracefully withdraw at this time. I, you do have that option. And if not, then we would proceed on the quasi-judicial hearing to address the question of the rezoning. Remember, what we have done here tonight is we've made a recommendation 
to deny the land development regulation. Only the City Council can grant or deny changes to the LDRs. And under the rezoning, we will make a recommendation when all is said and done. Only the City Council can grant or deny. So you, you didn't win the war. You understand that. This is just a battle. A battle, and now we have the second part. Then you're going to have the city council. All right? So you all understand that. Okay? Now, at this time, the chair needs to visit the men's room. We're in recess for five oh, minutes. Mr. Sherman. Sorry, sir. But I'm happy to